Two, but the overall record between the two sides stands at, would you believe it, to all. Canetti beginning down in West Wales on a quagmire of a pitch against Ponteberrim before moving on to beat Pontypool United. Then magnificent match at Pontypool, 26 points to 11. Round six up against Bridgend, 22 points to 13, and the semi-final on this park against Newbridge, 26 points to 24. That couldn't have been more dramatic. That's Flanetti's route to the 1989 Schweppes WRU Cup final. What then of the men of the Maltese cross? Carfilli, 46 points to nil, and that's been symptomatic of Beneath's try-scoring ability this season, over the 40-point mark several times in the season. On to Abercarn, Gleiner, Glamorgan Wanderers up at the Memorial Ground in Ely, 38 points to nil, no questions asked there. And then the semi-final at St Helens at Swansea against Cardiff, 19 points to 12. So, somewhat delirious, a certain amount of nervous tension all around the ground, people enjoying themselves. It really is, has turned out to be a family occasion. And one harks back to the beginning of this competition, the 70s, when this ground is filled by some four to 5,000 people. This competition has come on, and as Kevin Phillips mentioned last evening, this now is the highlight of the club season in Wales. I don't know about you, Phil Bennett, but I feel that nervous tension all around. Incredible, the atmosphere outside the ground, the Neath supporters and Canetti supporters mingling all up from the West. Is in, I've never felt an atmosphere like it. Not even an international match has created this kind of atmosphere. Yes, they came in their buses and hundreds of buses up from the West during the morning. This, the Flanetti team. Nine internationals in the Flanetti team and a club that thrives on the big occasion. And I suppose Dominic Sitaro is the surprise choice at centre. Here they come. Kevin Phillips leads Neath onto the field. Phil Davis leads Flanetti. Mark Jones. Brian Williams, Edmonds, Phil Davis, the Welsh Player of the Year. What a season it's been for him. Kevin Phillips, the farmer from Hebron, urging his men on. Thoroughly charged up atmosphere. Kevin Phillips calling his players over towards the south stand side in front of the committee box. In the middle, there's Beard, the referee, and alongside him, the experience of Clive Lawling and Derek Bevan. Bill Hardiman, former groundsman, lining everybody up. Flatty side then going away to our left. The conditions absolutely perfect for running rugby. Two days of uh, summery weather. Lots of doubts as to whether some of the Flatty pack could last the pace. And it's going to be a warm one down there for the next 80 minutes or so. The band in the background, the Royal Regiment of Wales TA band. And the presentation to the president of the Welsh Rugby Union, Martin Jones. Oh, there's some... Almost looks like an evangelist preacher there charging his men on going through the servants before the game. Flatley, of course, more accustomed to this occasion. That's Phil May, applied to the Flatley team. That's his fifth cup final appearance. Jonathan Griffiths, Colin Stevens, Brian Evans, who'll be up with the British Lions to Australia. Caroline Davis, the farmer from Flangadog, Eddie James, the policeman from Cardigan. And Steve Bowling, Gary Jones, and the grand old man, Ronan Stellaney, and Russell Cornelius. Clive Norling, shortly off to New Zealand. And Les Beard, today's official, and Derek Bevan, and that's the reserve referee, Gary Simmons, from Taskwell. <laughs> Jeremy Pugh introducing his own captain. But Jeremy Pugh certainly is the comic in the knee side. Brian Williams, Gareth Llewellyn and Phil Pugh. Much will depend on the fitness of these fellows. 
Paul Thorburn, the Welsh captain. Chris Higgs. And down towards Colin Natey. And Chris Bridges, the lead scrum half. David Pickering, of course, has been here before in Clinetti colours. A charged up atmosphere. And all the seats taken for what should really be a majestic occasion. David East in charge of his uh, first cup final, taking over the office of the Secretary of the Welsh Rugby Union. So we await for the national anthem. All the ceremonies almost completed. And there's been a lot more fun now before this particular match with the DC Thomas Cup involving the schoolboys and the ceremony of the longest try. So the crowd have been entertained. The national anthem. thrives on the big occasion. Dominic Sotaro is the surprise choice to centre instead of Wales B cap Simon Davis. It'll be a severe test of young Colin Stevens in his first cup final for his lock Phil May appears in his fifth. But most have agreed that Fanetti's performance will depend on Jonathan Griffiths at scrum half and the captain at number eight, the Welsh player of the year, Phil Davis. Neath have a score to settle and they've had this date very much in mind since last year's final. Six internationals in a team that has rewritten the record books this season. Paul Thorburn, the Welsh captain, provides the steadying influence behind the back and up front a forward unit that will keep going because their captain, Kevin Phillips, will demand it. Those then, the two teams as they line up. Perfect conditions. Capacity audience. Band taking their time as Les Beard checks with the two captains as to what the order of the play it will be. Les Beard, today's referee, has been quite a season for him. The first international in Dublin and now his first ever cup final. And after today, he's off to Japan with a Scott touring party. But this a proud and, I suppose, a very nervous moment for the 45-year-old police driving inspector from Cumbran. It will be Neath to kick off, going towards the River Taff. Paul Thorburn, the former captain of the Welsh All Blacks. And away we go, the cup final is underway. Ryan Evans has a good look at the bounce. Ryan Evans with the British Lions in Australia this summer. Quickly taken by Finefi. Chris Higgs with a pick-up for Neath. High testing kick, it's a very high one above the north stand. Bowling takes Porter Matty, picking up with Cameron Davis on the far side. Corbin ideally positioned. And again, the return of the high kick. Will May. Superb concentration by the former Fnaki skipper. Needs put in. 
And that's uh, greeted, of course, with huge applause by the partisan men from the Mall. This a crucial test for both sides. First come, vitally important as far as the psychology of the game is concerned. Bridges just uh, sorting the alignment out. Anthony spinning around. And they won't like that in the flatty front row, Kevin Phillips. Thinking of a quick charge. But uh, rather cautiously, perhaps, unlike Kevin Phillips, asking uh, Paul Thorburn to have a go. That's the distance, a good 38 metres. Perfect kicking conditions, the slight breeze coming off the top stand in front of the River Tap. Paul Thorburn, 317 points a season so far. All the experience of 24 caps for Wales. Thorburn with a kick, it looks a good one. Not there, the flags stay down. That could have been an early blow for Neath. Colin Stevens with a dropout. Right in front of his forwards, the run on from Cornelius. Tremendous boy by the knee forwards. And it's in there somewhere, fellas, and again the knee put in. And Neath has started far stronger, they put the ball in front of their pack, and they've had to put in a both scrums, which is vital. It's good, having a quick look. We'll cut to Kevin Phillips. And uh, let's hope that he can continue such a, a vital member of the Neath Pack, the main motivator of this side. And he's a key man for Neath this afternoon. He's had a magnificent season. Uh, very unlucky to lose his international spot. But he's the leader, he drives them on, and he's vital for the Neath cause. I'm sure Kevin won't want to leave at this stage of this junction. Eight metres outside the 22 metre line, and again that scrum spinning around. Bridges with a put in just outside the 20 22 metre line. It's a good spot by Phillips. He's come in a little bit of disarray there, but the charge is on. Carolyn Davis underneath it. And he had to get that one away very quickly indeed. Superb kicking by Neath, putting the pressure on the Tnafi defence. So this spells danger for the Scarlets. That's how close Neath are to the Tnafi try line. Two man line out. Eight at the back is Mark Jones for Neath. May won the battle that time, Cornelius, ever so dangerous. And David Pickering really hammering Colin Stevens down that time and spotted by referee Les Beard, and that's a penalty to the Scarlets. A word of caution from Les Beard. Dominic Sataro in the centre, lining up people. Stevens away and not finding his mark. Forburn with a high boot. As Neath gather around the bounce. Bridges underneath him. Ryan Evans in the thick of things. Up you get. Snappy put in, says Les Pierre. The scrum, 10 metres outside the Snappy 22 metre line. Jonathan Griffiths, the first Snappy put in. Let's see what kind of drive, what kind of uh, cohesion Fnetti can put in. Griffiths with the feed, slight turn of the scrum, Colin Stevens. Oh, he's rifled that one way, way away, having spotted the positioning of uh, Paul Thorburn. So Thorburn having to wait for the bounce. 
safely into touch, but the majestic kick from young uh, Colin Stevens really caught Neath unawares that time. That was good play by the young fly off number 10 because he saw that Thorburn was out of position and rather go for touch, he put 60 or 70 metres downfield to give Fleffy a chance to get near the Neath 22. Fleffy, first time in the Neath half. In that, after six and a half minutes of play in the first half. Eddie James with a throw in. Cornelius goes up. May having to do the cleaning up, which he's so good at doing. Griffiths on the charge. And Leffy beginning to put their act together. Griffiths trying to get the ball away. Neath outside, and that'll be the penalty. Kick going, judged to be the culprit that time. And a scoring opportunity for young Colin Stevens. That's the distance with the slight breeze behind him. And just look at this line out, it's a bit scrappy, Cornelius taps it down, but good cleaning up by the Tlethley forwards, their film may always brave to go down, and look at Griffiths' strength, driving at the Neath outside half, laying it back, good support play, Tlethley a bit slow to get there, but watch number seven Pickering, there where he goes offside, and he's caught, penalty to Tlethley. Crucial kick then for Tlethley. Young Stevens is voted the most promising player of the year on that Wednesday night. Now uh, doing his preparatory work. Stevens then from uh, 24 metres, 25 metres allowing for the angle. 207 points this season so far. Steady as the ball goes high. And again, another miss. No one wonders whether the nerves are getting the better of young Colin Stevens and the more experienced Paul Thorburn. A charge from Gary Jones. Sitaro failing to gather the ball. Thorburn goes through for Neath. And Neath having recovered well, and what's more, they gave the penalty. Hands in the loose that time. Clearly indicated by Les Peard. And that's the Neath charge from Kenny Phillips. He wastes absolutely no time in getting the game into mo motion and this appears to be a strict caution from Les Peard to Phil Pugh and no doubt as to the content of the message from Les Peard there's the charge by the Neath pack look at Phil Pugh coming in the ball nowhere near really there and he's not playing the ball and Mr Peard gives him a severe, severe warning Phil Pugh, the minor from uh, Sem Sisters. And that indiscretion has meant another opportunity for Colin Stevens. This a long, long way for the diminutive uh, outside half from Billy Boyle, but well capable of that distance. Stevens and he gets some points on the board the first points of this cup final there's a strike nowhere near and uh, that will be a worrying factor for Phil Davis two attempts and uh, not really striking them at all well Thorburn Heath anxious to get us underway again Nigel Davis Challenged by Edwards, most gainly of kicks, kicks across there to Thorburn, the switch of attack, Paul Williams, and Jonathan Griffiths just lurking back there, but picked up by Steve Bowling. Bowling spotting spaces over this side, Edmonds though, ideally positioned, Paul is pointing the way ahead, Edmonds on the charge, Ryan Edmonds going back, it's a battle between the two wings, and eventually it's Jonathan Griffiths, running the danger and coming across. Edmonds, though, in full flight. The scrum, two or three metres outside the 22 metre line. Up you get, says Les Beard. Oh, 
Certainly not the explosive start that we had last year's cup final between these two sides. But full of vigour and promise. Jonathan Griffiths is waiting for the feed from his forwards. Colin Stevens getting intent on running it. Oh, it's a bowling superbly picked out of the air onto Carolyn Davis. He's got a challenge hit. Davis back inside. Feeding Sitara. Sitara with a chip ahead over the 22 metre line. Hicks is back there for me. Superb running from defence by the Scarlets. And there's the man involved, Sitara. I think that's where he was picked instead of Simon Davis. But Kalefi will attempt to spread the ball wide on occasion. Eddie James to throw in. Man who is to share the front row duties with his opposite number today, Kevin Phillips, in the cardigan side. It's been difficult for the players to hear the line-out signals down there. Eddie James coming in to deputise for the injured David Fox in the Clatty lineup. James looking for Phil Davis and Gary just is back on the Clatty side, but leaf through very quickly indeed. Few, Kevin Phillips and uh, Brian Williams into County Front Row from uh, Breckenshire and Pembrokeshire and Cardiganshire. Griffiths close to the neat try line. Stevens, the drop goal attempt. Has it got there? It's there. Three points to nil. Colin Stevens makes amends and puts the Nephi into the lead after nearly 13 minutes of play in the first half. Good solid scrum by Tlenethi, quick ball and well played by Griffiths, gives Stevens the chance and what confidence, he's just missed a penalty but he doesn't care, sticks the ball, it's there from the minute he leaves his boot and it's three points. And just from the other angle, just watch the youngster, he takes his time, doesn't panic, sights the post and as he strikes it, it's always going to be there and that's a dream start again for Tlenethi. Corbin and away once again, won't be really calling for that one but it comes to Phil Davis. Charged into touch by Chris Bridges. Kevin Phillips with a throw, just beyond the 10 metre line inside the Fletty half. There's Beard asking uh, a little bit of distance between uh, the warring factions down there. Phillips, Gareth Welling got a fingertip to it, Fletty through very quickly, Cornelius. But neat habit. Bridges onto David Pickering. That's the secondary charge. And he's over the gain line. The all important feature of that kind of move. Bridges to Paul Williams to Colin Leite. A hard tackle by Sachara. Leite just hanging onto the ball. A second or two too long. And all of a sudden, a bit of mayhem. Charged up atmosphere. Getting the better of a couple of individuals. have a look again very emotional game David Pickering done well to drive in there look at Leite now in the middle looking for the half gap but he's tackled by the Tlethi centre Tlethi went forward Jones there now just watch as the both packs come in very emotional as I say I think there's a punch coming in there somewhere there's where Mr Peter's seen it Dominic Sitara the man injured and Les Peter having a, a quiet consultation with Clive Norling the touch judge's flag was not up, so he might not have spotted the infringement. Although a word of kindly advice from one of the world's most experienced referees would not go amiss. It looks as if uh, Les Peard is calling the two captains together. We've had one word of caution. Look, we can look further there, Mr Peard's very much on the spot, looking at he's awarded the penalty, but I think, I think there's the punch again going in there. Penalty to Tanetti. And Colin Stevens given uh, another long bomb opportunity. Well capable of them, but uh, his kicking prowess this afternoon has not been of the highest order so far, at least. That's the halfway line. 
and Stevens, I think, will welcome this opportunity. It's on the halfway line, as you can see. Not many people will expect him to get there, so I think he'll give it a thump and try to put the other two kicks out of his mind. There's a bit of a breeze behind, but it's a swirling wind going around this vast auditorium. Colin Stevens. Let's call it 49 and a half metres. That's the distance. He's viewed it. The run, the kick. Oh, he struck it a long way. Onto the post. Now, unfortunate for Stevens. Corbin with the recovery kick, and what a monster. A superb recovery kick by Paul Corbin. The hard lines from Colin Stevens. A superb effort from nearly 50 metres. That was an excellent kick by Stevens, but that was a mighty kick as well in response from Paul Corbin. Cornelius in the middle of the line. Alongside him, Philip Pugh. And another penalty, a little bit of barging this time by Hugh Richards, as indicated by the referee. And really, you know, we're only 70 minutes gone, and this is probably the fourth attempt that Connor Stevens could have. I think Neath have got to tone it down a bit. No, he's going for a touch, but they're, they're lacking a little bit in discipline. Change of direction then from the captain, Phil Davis, asking his outside half to do exactly what he's accomplished to take the penalty pack inside the Neath 22 meter area. Kevin Phillips the try line from six or seven meters to the right lobbed towards Gareth Williams but it's anybody's ball at the back of the line out to Nephi a hunting and a knock on by one of the Fetty players but no doubt that uh, he will put on the disruptive shove here and Kevin Phillips will be urging his men to hold the scrum steady Bridges with the put in. It's the second or third collapse we've had during this match. Must be uh, worrying for Les Peard. Bridges, scrum half originally from Bethai with a put in, but this one could go against the head. Gone beyond the permitted 90 degrees, so down they go once again. Bridges once again. Put in better heel that time, much better by Neath. Corbin, a rushed kick, hasn't found it. Fowling, will he have another attempt at a drop goal? No. Can he shaved Les Pierce's head as it went over? But the kick is by Bridges, and that's a huge kick from Chris Bridges. And it's gone into touch on that far side. Two monster kicks from defence, one by Paul Forburn, one by Chris Bridges. As Neath go back into Tlethi territory. Midway through the first half, Tlethi still in the lead, three points to nil. Eddie James near the put-in. And the choice given. Scrum 50 metres in. Matthew Front Row, Lawrence Delaney, Eddie James, and Anthony Buchanan on the far side. Very interesting that Bridges is in the identical position as he put that chip in a few minutes earlier. I wonder if we try again. Bridges, the control from Mark Jones, the number eight. There's the chip. And Paul Williams giving chase. I just wonder whether Bateman might have been offside that try, but keep that going, there's the first try, Mark Jones, the try scorer. Mark Jones scores his 25th pit try of the season, and a vital one. Neath go into the lead by a point.
full credit first of all to Mark Jones it's not great ball but he is controlling it not panicking and he makes it into good ball and all credit to Bridges a lovely chip and C number 12 put in the pressure on the Tlethi there he's there making the ball and Mark Jones who initially given the pass follows up well deserved the try the conversion still to come from Paul Thorburn huge buzz of excitement all around the arms park Thorburn with a kick He's missed that one. And we can see the perfect height that Bridges get. And there's the centre coming off. And the full-back is taking man and ball. There he comes in and he deflects it back. Good play by Bateman. Mark Jones, ever so powerful. Seven or eight metres to go. You're not going to stop this big man. And he's fully deserved that excellent try for Mark Jones. Mark Jones will be absolutely delighted with that score. Neath the Welsh International back row member. Colin Stevens with the dropout, which will make the dropout from the 22 meter line. Corbin's dropout straight to bowling, the man put under pressure. Ian Evans. Paul Williams positioning himself. Ryan Evans with the rubber of the green that time. Collusion in midfield, accidental. Kevin Phillips, absolutely delighted to have points on the scoreboard. Phillips, the tap down, neat winning some good line out for Bridges on the break. Jones through, Nephi over the top and conceding a penalty. And I just watched Cone Phillips. Off he goes, gets the game underway. Avery supported by Jeremy Pugh. Bridges on the short side, Pickering outside him. On to Hugh Richards. Brian Williams trying to find some space on the short side. And very noticeable when Neath are awarded penalties, Kevin Phillips, quick as a flash, is taking them. He wants the tempo raised, he wants to keep the game flowing as Neath play this fast attacking 15 man style rugby. In a style, of course, that has served them well right throughout the season as unofficial champions and a world record number of tries. Eddie James, Austin Effie with the throw. Looking that time for Phil Davis, who'd moved up in the line out. Jonathan Griffiths waits. And Neath offside. And Phil Davis, the athletic captain, deciding to ask Colin Stevens to have a go once again. This distance, some 35 metres, all the way towards those packed terraces, enjoying the warmth of the May sunshine. Ground conditions absolutely perfect and this is a vital kick for young Stevens really he's kicked badly he's missed three I think he, if he would have missed that then his confidence would really ebb away vital kick for the young outside half Stevens with the following win it's been pretty warm down there a bit of uh, bad sportsmanship around the ground with the whistles uh, Steven starts his run, that's the kick, we may get there, it's got there at last, a pretty ungainly kick, it almost uh, crept underneath the crossbar, but he's made it at last. Yes, it wasn't the best strike I've ever seen, but he'll be delighted, it crawled over, but it's three points for the playoff. Fletty go back into the lead, six points to four after 25 minutes of play. Corbin to restart. Likes to tee up the ball just to get to the boot right underneath it to give it some elevation and allow his forward some time to follow on. Perfect chip. Phil May gathers. Griffiths waits. And surely that time Kevin Phillips outside. 
Kevin Post will dispute that one, claiming that the ball was already out and playable. Colin Stevens it looks a fine kick. Corbin and that almost returned with interest up towards the roof of the stand. Paul Corbin, a man born in West Germany. And that's the temperature, 82 degrees Fahrenheit. One wonders whether the likes of uh, some of the elderly gentlemen in the flatty side will last the pressure. Did Michael May and Russell Cornelius, it's going to be a long afternoon. Over the lifting by Tanetti. And off he goes Kevin Phillips once again. Show me the spot, he says to Les Pierre, we'll get the game underway. Corbin with a kick. Ryan Evans thinking of a quick return into the field of play. Corbin then takes Neath up into the 22 metre territory. Amazing sunshine. And he changed to the throw. Cornelius in the middle. His main target man, Cornelius, getting a hand to it. Griffiths on the short side. On the Griffiths. Goes with the Welsh uh, B tour to Canada during the summer. Kevin Phillips with the throw once again. Which is jumping at two. Gareth Llewellyn in the middle and the height of Mark Jones at the back. That's Llewellyn going up, aided by Phil Pugh. Bridges on the charge and Ethel had to recover. Fed by Brian Williams. Paul Williams on to David Pickering. The pick up by Jeremy Pugh. He's getting their act together a little bit. But there's the counter surge from Tanetti. And a little bit of aggravation once again. And he's been sent off indeed. Mark Jones has been spotted and it looks as if the card was sent towards his direction. Well, such drama at the cup final. The infringement spotted. And there, this looks very carefully. The ball's going on, they're pulling towards the floor. Let's have a look at Mark Jones. There he is coming into your shot now. They're all grappling for the ball, mauling it. Mr. Peard's perfectly positioned. And look, there's where he sees the boot going in, and the ball is nowhere near. What ill discipline for a great player. All very unfortunate in a cup final. There had been a couple of earlier incidents. A charged up atmosphere, of course. One expects that in the cup final. But uh, dirty play of the boot. Man injured, Lawrence Delaney. Beneath and down to 14 men with the sending off of Mark Jones, the try scorer in the first half. Stevens doesn't find touch. Corbin, just over the halfway line. Cornelius going up for it. Phil Pugh gathers. Bridges on the short side. And away go Neath. This is Paul Williams. Neath little jink back inside. Nettie there in numbers. The feed by Gareth Llewellyn. On to Bridges. Griffiths goes covering. And that's the penalty. It's Nettie taking a man out. They're not going to take the penalty, or are they? Oh, I wonders about this. <laughs> Kevin Phillips always uh, disgusted look, with himself. Look at this, Bridges chips it ahead. Cornelius says, I can't get out of your way. I'm 17, 18 stone, but Mr. Peart said that he obstructed him penalty. Quite comical, really, that Kevin Phillips really wanted to run that ball. And only an appeal from Paul Corbin. Stop him doing so. Paul Corbin then.
to put Neath in the lead. 25 metres. Auburn's kick. Not there. That really is surprising. That is incredible. The man who kicked so many goals under pressure has missed a simple kick which would have put his side in the lead. I find that staggering. Letty six, Neath four, after 31 minutes of play. With Mark Jones, the Neath number eight, sent off the field. It's going to be difficult to see now how Neath are going to cope without their number eight. Man who links the back of the scrum. Two man line immediately called by Kevin Phillips. One by Phil Davis. Back to Jonathan Griffiths. And the bounce is a fine one. The loss of Matt Jones is going to be crucial to Neath because he's their tall man at the back of the line out. But they've been under pressure on the scrums, even with an eight man Mark Jones, with eight men in the forwards. They're going to be under tremendous pressure now. Kevin Phillips with a throw. His uh, main line-out jumper now at the front, Hugh Richards, just behind number five, Gareth Llewellyn, the youngster from Clanharan. And Nettie beginning to win uh, some line-out ball, Jonathan Griffiths over the 10-metre line. And over they go, making the ball available for Eddie James. Not the best of scrum half passes. Nigel Davis, and that one out of the ball, so back they'll come. It was all rather a bit rushed, a little bit too quick. But it was very ironic there that the ball won by Flatley and used by Griffiths. He tore through a gap there where a number eight would be blocking him off. Now it's well in. Well, shoot cap. Much depends on him now. Injury to Jonathan Griffiths. Not a serious one. There's a Flatley disc discuss their tactics but I'm sure the uh, level of conversation underneath ranks is a little bit desperate Kevin Phillips trying to work out how he's going to cope with that the presence of Mark Jones he's looking at this line out very carefully look it's gone fairly long over the top and snapped by Phil Davis that's where they missed Mark Jones now look at Griffiths he's running here there's no number eight to challenge him there are big gaps there and that's going to be a key area, key area now with, which Neath have got to solve the gaps will be there all afternoon Phillips meet with an orthodox line out and that's superbly taken by the young man Gareth Llewellyn. Bridges for Thorburn. Thorburn's kick. They call it for it fouling. Took it well to Ian Evans. And that's a monster of a kick from Ian Evans, but it's not going to reach touch. Thorburn ideally positioned underneath it. And bringing Edmonds into play. Kicker in with a pick up. That's okay, says referee Les Beard. And away goes Kevin Phillips. Neath are not done yet, not disheartened by any means. Thorburn, Paul Williams, Batesman, on to Edmonds. Edmonds up against Ryan Evans, and Edmonds nearly got past the Welsh international winger. Ryan Evans under extreme pressure from Alan Edmonds, the sprinter. Good play by Neath there. They won two rucks there, switched the ball to give Alan Edmonds, their leading try scorer, the chance. Six minutes of the first half to go. Eddie James up to Nettie with the throw in. Lobbed up from Phil May, just a palm back. But the penalty goes to the Welsh Hall backs to Neath. So what's Kevin Phillips got up his sleeve? The charge on. Oh, we felt that one up here. And that's the tactic that Neath are using, the quick short penalty. Actually, they actually counteracting by the 19 stone Phil Davis going in and crashing him down. And it appears that uh, Nessie under pressure. Jonathan Griffiths waiting for the service. Colin Stevens, two or three black jerseys streaming at him, but he got the kick away. 
and it looks as if uh, we might have been wrong that Mark Jones has not been sent off rather than Sinbind. Hugh Richards on to Phil Davis. Russell Cornelius trying to set it up. Caffey on the 10 metre line. That's uh, Mark Jones, who uh, he's had a bit of a respite. And certainly the colour of the card that I saw was a red one, however. May have been wrong in his sunshine. Jonathan Griffiths on the 10 metre line. Pick up by Phil Davis. <laughs> Another clash. So there's the Fanatic captain, all 19 stones, 7 pounds of him charging on. Over the top, says Les Beard. Stevens with the kick to Gary Owen on the far side. Higgs underneath and took it well. Young winger. Sataro with a fly hat. Accidentally bumping into each other. So down they go for a scram on the 22 metre line. an opportunity and then for Canetti to make the most of uh, Mark Jones's absence Bill Davis that's the charge ahead over the advantage line Canetti there in numbers Griffiths Stevens Sitaro Nigel Davis on to Yayan Evans Yayan Evans is on for big but the pass is forward oh memories of his try against Scotland came flooding back then Bridges with a footing. Some beneath 22 metre line. And they'll have to do it all over again. The scrum just spinning round and frustrating everybody. Come round again, says Les Beard. Neath just hoping to hold the scrum steady. And Mark Jones back onto the field. Well, it was a sin bin offence after all, and that will be no small relief. But look at the word of caution that Les Pierre's going to give to him. Yes, at least he's come back on. He's saying, look, no more stamping, but he's made a big difference. He's come back on. Mark Jones would do well to heed that word of caution. Natty on the 22 metre line of Neath, Neath now back to full strength. But the penalty, it's about the sixth or seventh collapse of the scrum that we've had, and this time uh, there's Peard judging Neath to be the guilty party. And there's the indication from uh, young Colin Stevens that he's going to have a go at the post. Not the most difficult kicks. But in this atmosphere, in the tenseness of this drama, every kick is a difficult one. Towards the city centre, and towards the, all those people enjoying the sunshine on the terraces. Now, 30 seconds from uh, the half-time whistle, plus injury time. Six points to four. Colin Stevens with an opportunity of another three for Kennedy. There's the run. Oh, he's hooked this one. And Colin Stevens receiving a, a pat on the shoulder from his captain, Phil Davis. No doubt the words were, come on, get it all together. Thorburn with the restart. Huge kick down towards the 22 metre line. Fouling coming over for Kennedy. Switch to Yayan Evans. Bridges back for Neath. Straight into touch. There's Beard having a look uh, at his watch. Been a couple of injuries, so a few seconds to be added on.
Eddie James at the throw in midway between the 22 and the halfway line. Mark Jones now resumed his position. Griffiths, Stevens to Satari. They miss out a man. That's the loop uh, move. Nigel Davis not uh, gathering the ball though. Late he was there for Neath. And Neath should take full advantage of this one with Bridges with a kick. Bowling takes after the bounce. Near cross field. Oh, didn't Corbin read that one well? Corbin on the charge. Linking up with Jeremy Pugh, the man from Bill Wells. Over the halfway line. And that indeed is the half time whistle from referee Les Peard. Not the classic that we'd hoped for in the first 40 minutes. And indeed, the, most of the drama being given to us by the departure to the sin bin of Mark Jones. But Lanetti, the lead at half time by six points to four. So now let's rejoin Alan Wilkins on the balcony. Thank you, Martin. Yes, and alongside me, Eddie Butler. Eddie, uh, some would say a disappointing half, and obviously with Mark Jones being sent off there, just put a little tinge on it. Well, yes, it did, I and mean, it was going to be hot and nasty, and I think uh, what has surprised me is that there have been so many bodies on the floor, although the Mark Jones incident had nothing to do with that, that he actually dumped somebody on the floor, then stamped on him, right in front of the referee and was lucky to get away with just being sent off for 10 minutes, put in the sin bin. And he desperately badly want him back, of course, he is the try scorer and how well he took the try, that uh, he really is a powerful runner and his contest with Phil Davis is, is the most enthralling of this half. I don't, think it, I don't think it was fair to anticipate too much from the first half, they're still sounding each other out. It was all a pity with Mark Jones, Eddie, because he was the one who scored the only try of the first half and it came on the 20-minute mark. That's right, it was obviously a planned move that Chris Bridges was always going to kick the ball high. He had his centres and his wings up flat to chase the high kick. And look how much pressure has been put on the Fletley capture there by Alan Bateman. That's good following up and now the pure strength of Mark Jones and the ability to stay on his feet. And it's remarkable running by a very, very strong man. Last year, Eddie, uh, Brian Thomas made a comment that Neath didn't turn up for the final. It's taken them a while to get going in this match, hasn't it? Well, I think Neath were, w would have been most worried about the first 20 minutes because in last year's final, Fletley had the game sewn up after that period that uh, Neath failed to do anything in 20 minutes. And it almost looked as if they were going to do the same this time, that Colin Stevens had a chance at the penalty goals. The kicking in general has been very poor, and on a still day, that is surprising. But, of course, there is a lot of tension out there. And Neath, having ridden that first half and trailing by only two points, I mean, they had a chance to go into the lead. Paul Forward missed an easy penalty. And then, of course, Colin Stevens had, a, had an easy penalty, to, which he also missed. The game is still very, very finely balanced. And uh, I think Clinetley are starting to exert a little bit of pressure in the scrum. The Neath scrum, when it, had, was, when it was down to seven men, actually did very well. But Clinetley are exerting pressure. The scrum is being wheeled. Anything they can do to sap Neath's strength in the scrum, Lettley are doing better in the line-outs, Phil may have in particular, but uh, what Neath have to do, they have to scrabble ball away, and I think they have to get better ball to service, Phil uh, dive pickering and, uh, and Mark Jones standing off Ruck and Maul. Their main aim this season has been set up their big back row men running at the little men. They haven't done this this half, but they have absorbed the pressure which destroyed them last year. It's all set for an amazing second half, because although the first half has been uh, not dull, it's, it, it, it has lacked a lot of uh, enterprise and, and, and spectacle, but it does set this second half up for, uh, for, that, for the continuing saga. Thank you, Eddie. Eddie Butler then. So the crowd waits, 58,000 here at the National Ground, 6-4 to Finetley at the end of a very rigorous first half. In the commentary box for the second half, Phil Bennett and Martin Williams. Colin Stevens ready to get the second half underway. Let's hope that we do have an amazing second half of this game. It picks up a pace or two. Les Beard asking Ken Phillips if he's ready to receive Stevens underway. Paul Williams having a good look at the ball to see, uh, see the bounce. So Neath going with uh, this slight freeze over the river tap in the second half. Auburn with all the composure of a seasoned international. Drop at just the right distance for his balls to challenge as uh, Phil Davis takes for Tanetti and the ball made available on the neat side. Bridges with a kick. And Evans underneath it. Evans thinking about a run but running into a wall of black jerseys. And away goes Kevin Phillips. On to here Richards. Bridges struggling to get the ball back to David Pickering. Pickering on the charge again over the 22 meter line. 
and Heath hoping to make the ball available. Phillips trying to turn that little corner around his players. And still Neath seemed to have it on the short side, Edmonds. Eddie James back there for Finetti. And that was good Neath made. Continuous pressure on the Finetti defence. This is the ideal position for Neath at the beginning of the second half. Charging at the Finetti line. How they would dearly love a score right at the beginning of this half. Phillips, long throw. Davis for Tanetti though. Put the ball on the short side to Paul Williams. And good defensive tackling by Tanetti. Saw the danger. The kick by Ian Evans. And that's a long, long one for Thorburn to chase. Paul Thorburn over the halfway line, down towards the 22 metre line, giving chase to his own kick. Griffiths takes for Tanetti, hoping to find a gap. And that time. The option not taken of bringing the Fletty three quarters into the line, but Neath now have it. The chip has been touched in flight, so they can play on. Paul Williams over the halfway line. And Neath on the short side to Batesman. And suddenly one gets the impression that, that Neath have been told a few things at half time and the game is gathering pace. Yes, they've stepped up a gear, but what was disappointing from the Fletty angle was the wrong options taken by both the Ian Evans and Jonathan Griffiths trying to run from deep inside the 22, play this side into trouble. But Neath look much sharper, they're looking much keener. They got Fletty on the rack. Injured man Phil May. Fletty desperate in defence. Just throwing their bodies at the Neath avalanche of pressure. And just look at this when I met, said about Griffiths' wrong option. He takes it superbly well. Now I think a, a big 50 meter kick here would have been ideal for his forwards, but look, he runs right into trouble and his pack have to roll back and Neath, there they are coming in, they're going forward, making perfect ball available for Bridges. All the time in the world to choose his options, goes on the narrow side, chip ahead. Not good football at the moment by both sides, but it there they are driving in, Clancy under trouble. Neath looking much sharper. There's a prop forward sending a perfect pass out. Bateman looks to be there, but there he puts a foot in touch. Bill May resuming his position, limping rather heavily to his number two jumping spot to the line out. As Eddie James under pressure. An important throw for the man from Cardigan. Goes to the middle of the line out looking for Cornelius Griffiths, takes for Tanetti. Tries to get the kick away, almost picked up by Chris Bridges. Nessie here hoping to wear this pressure. Neath thinking otherwise, of course. Neath with a put-in. That's the Tanetti try line in the background. Ryan Evans, the marshal on the short side. I wonders whether we'll see a back row move from Neath this time. Mark Jones. Look at Alan Edmonds come in there. Mark Jones to Bridges. A tackle by Sitaro that time. And Finetti over the top. And this will be quickly taken, I no doubt, by Kevin Phillips. Just looking around. One to seize every opportunity. A bit of discussion in the lead ranks. What shall we do with it? It's going to be a set move. All the options open. Phillips to Mark Jones, the try scorer in the first half. The setup, the delivery to Bridges, to Pickering, two or three metres short. Pugh goes in there. Brian Williams with the feed. Bridges on to Bateman, worming his way through. Bateman onto Hugh Richards, onto Kevin Phillips. Has the captain got there? He's inches short. Well, it almost looks like a rush hour queue in the tubes of London. Somewhere underneath there, there must be Kevin Phillips. And just the sort of game that Kevin Phillips wants. Very fast, very fluid, charging at the Clatty defence. And I tell you what, they're going to take some hold in. Mark Johnson is back row now. Let's see what Neath will do with this. Six points to four. But Neath definitely in the first quarter of this second half dominating matters a 
very interesting there just from the scrum you can see how close Paul Williams is there I'm sure there's gonna be a back row move involved and he may be there to help out Bridges with the put-in Mark Jones with the feed definitely turning the scrum around no try for Mark Jones that time Les Beard already signaling the players back again all the options open to Neath Paul Williams still remaining in that position. Bridges with a feed. Bridges going wide. Mark Jones with the pick up to Bridges to Bateman. Knock on, says referee Les Beard. Neath once again deny the try. That was well worked, really. Lovely flick on passes. Awkward pass for Bateman, but sometimes you have to take those chances. Natty still in dangerous waters. This time they have the put in. Jonathan Griffiths, the control from Phil Davis. Straight back to Colin Stevens, and he got that one away well. Under pressure from Chris Bridges, but Colin Stevens with a 30 meter kick. But have Tanetti survived the pressure? Richards from Pontney Thorne jumping at two in the line out. Bill May slightly impeded in uh, his progress towards the ball that time. The scrum 15 metres in the field. And what's been impressive with Neath in the second half, I think their scrummage has improved. They were struggling a bit in the first half, but they're definitely more solid. It'll come as no comfort to those players down there. The knowledge that the temperature has now raised to 85 degrees in this bowl. Grand preparation for a Lions tour, but not a cup final. Bridges. With the feed, 10 metres outside the 30, 22 metre line. That's the box kick, which has worked so well for Neath. Bowling underneath. Took it well. Jonathan Griffiths, left footed, not the best of kicks. Slice that one. And the pressure is back on the Scarlets. Interesting ploy called by Neath. Kevin Phillips with a quick throw. Pickering there. It happened on the five metres. Well, Kevin Phillips must be asking himself, what do we have to do? I tell you what, that was touch and go there. David Pickering and Tanaji came up to the five metre. I'm sure he was only inches in that. Just have a look here. We can't see the line, but Pickering very smart thinking. He thought he thought he was in for a try. The put in by Jonathan Griffiths, and uh, the scrum just crowding across. Griffiths to Stevens. Well, he's getting them away, but <laughs> only seconds or split seconds or inches in it. quite content to stay in this half of the ground two points in it at least six neath four after ten minutes of play in the second half Kevin Phillips's throw superbly taken by Phil Davis though at the back Griffiths with a kick and that one uh, not gaining uh, the length that Griffiths would have wanted It's the cooler side of the ground. Players in the heat as Hugh Richards. The charge over. Bridges to Paul Williams. The half jink. A good tackle by Eddie James. Nephi though offside in the middle. Now watch Neath straight into action. Oh, Paul Williams unlucky that time. Just lost his footing at the vital moment. On the short side. Bridges to Thorburn. They've got men over there. Thorburn. Can he get there himself? Looking back inside, it's Brian Williams, the man from Tumble, take the try. Brian Williams, the try scorer, the mobile prop. And great delight all around the Arts Park. The Neath supporters on their feet. As Neath now regain the lead after 11 minutes of play in the second half.
amazing tactics by Nice because there was a penalty in front of the post but they decided to run the ball and here's the reward for Enterprise. Thorburn makes this try, look, people say he's slow but he's striding through and look who he waits, intelligent waiting for the support and who's there, a prop forward Williams. Seems to be tackled, no stopping him, tremendous try. And we can see again Thorburn using his strength and pace. Here he shows that he can move when he's going at full speed. Good tackling, but watch how he intelligently stays there. Look, looking for support. There's the flick up coming. There's the farmer, Brian Williams from Cardigan. A prop forward deserves this because he made 15 meters and he's over. The change of kicker in uh, the Neath ranks. Paul Williams, he's no stranger to the kicking duties, having scored 264 points for Neath this season, sharing the kicking duties with Paul Thorburn. This, a vital kick. Williams, oh, he's a little bit too casual with that one. But Neath will be delighted with that eight points to six lead. And this fellow will remember this day for a long time to come. He's had his problems with injuries. He's missing from the Neath squad for a full year. But now he can remember and tell his grandchildren about the try he scored in the cup final. Stevens, drop out. Now can Tanetti respond? This is uh, a rare view, really, during the second half. Tanetti inside the neat half. Gary Jones at the tail of the line-out. Andy James with a lob one. Then for Cornelius through very quickly. Kevin Phillips and David Pickering. And there's the Neath captain, just leading by example. Bridges short side, the box kick once again. Bowling with the sun in his face. Takes it courageously onto Sitaro. Nigel Davis on the outside, Sitaro with a kick. Thorburn goes back. And there's the reply. And it's a sign of a class player, really. Paul Thorburn, ideally positioned, giving himself time. James on the far side. We're throwing. I think the line out signal is all worked out. Through the middle again. Picked up by Mark Jones from Neath. And the option given. It's from 15 metres in. Put in by Chris Bridges, right on the 10 metre line inside the Neath half. And it's interesting that Paul Thorburn has gone to fly half here because I think needs to be looking for a huge kick from him to put Cletty deep back inside their 22. Mark Jones doing the marshalling a bit, uh, but a bit of a mix up in the Neath ranks. Edmonds looking for the support, the pick up by Paul Williams, but uh, Cletty through very quickly indeed. There's the drive over. And he's hoping to make the ball available. Two points in it after 15 minutes of play in the second half. Neath back into the lead, eight points to six. Quick word from referee Les Pierre to the two front row clubs. Jonathan Griffiths with the feed Davis a quickly worked move to Yain Evans and Davis on the pick up again Nigel Davis to Sitaro to Kathleen Davis Kathleen is going to the line Neath the dairy numbers Davis checks his stride now Tanecki will be looking for the secondary ball and here it comes to Colleen Stevens and Nigel Davis on the far side can he find Yain Evans Yain Evans going for the corner this could be the dramatic try Yain Evans is through the try scored by the Welsh international Evans over for his 16th try of the season and Tanecki had responded Just look at this scrum ball here. 
Phil Davis looking for moves. Just watch them. Part played by Ian Evans. There's the dummy run, and Evans comes on from the wing. Inside the Phil Davis, it's scrappy ball, and it's out. Now watch the good work by Carwin Davis. I think he deserves a great deal of credit. He cuts inside, see the covers there, but he stays on his feet, making the ball available. That's good play by the winger. And it's all now about good hang handling and good running. And there's a gap boom in there and a lovely long pass to Nigel Davis puts Ian Evans into space and he's a flyer the Neef coverers can't get near him marvellous try for Evans the conversion to come and another change of kicker the left footed Carwin Davis taking over the responsibilities he's kicked a few for Trinetti this season them tries and 82 points in total but that's not there either. The kickers are not having the best of days at the 89 Schweppes WRU Cup final. And there's the good work done by Carwin Davis. And just watch the gap opens. And Nigel Davis exploits it to the full. Look, going outside Mark Jones. And there's the long, lovely time pass. And look, neither no slouches. Bateman's fast, but he's not going to catch Evans. With a yard or two to, to go. Speedster, and he's over in the corner. The dropout from Paul Thorburn finds Russell Cornelius. Griffiths to Colin Stevens hasn't found touch that's disappointing the reply coming from uh, Edmonds of the far side and that one going out on the pole one of the factors which have been has been very poor today with both sides except for maybe Paul Thorburn has been the kicking out of hand the number of touches missed has been incredible and let's be fair conditions are ideal for kicking out of hand two points in it and Effie back into the lead Eddie James, possibly his main target man in the second half, might be to the back of the line out. Towards the giant Phil Davis. This time just to the middle. Charge on uh, Biney. He'll want to get back into this game as quickly as possible. Paul Williams, nice little half break, looking for the back row support. He's still got it. On to Alan Bateman. Nigel Davis, an attempted fly hack. Brian Williams, the switch of attack, that's intelligent play by me, to Colin Leite, up to Paul Corburn. Corburn's got Edmonds outside, and Leite though, there in numbers. The ball available for Leite, swept away by Ian Evans, disappointing with Colin Stevens, the knock-on. And young Stevens really needs to settle down in this game, the last 20 minutes are going to be so vital to both sides. Chris Bridges with the put in some eight metres outside the 20 22 metre line. First half was somewhat disappointing. This one has lived up to all the expectations this second period. The control from David Pickering this time. Bridges, Paul Williams, they miss out a man. It's a work move to find Lady. A little bit static though. Corbin back inside. Nigel Davis with a tackle. Stevens got there. Davis to Jonathan Griffiths to Carwin Davis. And Heath being able uh, to turn the man around that time. And there certainly is a fair old pile up down there. <whistles> no, says Les Pierre, it's not going to come out of there, but he's going to put in. Tooney, much to the annoyance of the partisan Scarlet Army. And I think an important feature of this second half has been the improvement of the Neath scrummage. Just have a look at it very carefully here to see if Mark Jones has the control because they went backwards in the first half, now they're much steadier. The temperature keeps going up, 86 degrees. Phil Davis, who started this game at uh, 19 stone at 7 pounds, wonders what his weight will be at the end of the afternoon. Bridges with all the options open, providing uh, <laughs> that mayhem can be sorted out. And this is a perfect position for Chris Bridges. He's kicked so well this afternoon. He's got the box there waiting for him again, and he's kicking high into the stun, stun which will give Steve Bowling a hard time. And that's why Steve Bowling has positioned himself right on the try line, giving himself plenty of space. Bridges with a put in. The control heel at the box kick. And there's Bowling. He's having difficulty. And the ball is loose for anybody. Is it Paul Williams? The try has been scored. 
It is as simple as that. The sun was Steve Bowling's problem. But a neatly judged kick once again by Chris Bridges, the telling feature. And what a brilliant kick by Chris Bridges, right into the sun, giving bowling all kinds of nightmares. But where was little Nettie covered? Only one man back there, but fair play. Paul Williams had followed up, he deserved that. Ten points to twelve. A ding-dong struggle. And that's what uh, most of the punters had expected. Changing hands ever so frequently, and this Corbin, he's kicked that one magnificently straight through the middle into the shirt sleeve crowd. An extra two points as Neath now regain the lead, 14 points to 10 after 22 minutes of play in the second half. And there it is again. I emphasise better scrum ball from Neath. Mark Jones. There's Bridges, takes charge, a beautiful high kick, North Nettie cover, only the one man, two or three Neath men bearing down, Bowling hasn't got a hope, he doesn't know where it's going, Williams does, he deserved that, he worked out a follow-up. Paul Williams, minoring Colin Stevens' kick-off. Well, the predictable quality about this particular game is that uh, both sides have had the ability to respond to each other's scores. Bill Davis coming across, he'll want to uh, generate some spirit and urgency into the Tatty ranks, and that's precisely what he's done. On to Gary Jones, up toward the 22-metre line. The penalty to Fanetti. Collapsing the ruck. Not staying on their feet taking it down, and this an opportunity for Colin Stevens. Not the most difficult of kicks again, but uh, good kicking has not been a feature of this cup final. Bill Davis once again giving Colin Stevens the opportunity. Stevens, ball upright in front of the post, 25 metres, and this to bring Tanetti back to within a point of the neat total. Stevens, the run, the kick is through the middle, up into the tier, stand behind. So now there's just a point in it after 25 minutes of play in the second half. It's turning out to be a grand cup final. Second half, much better quality. The sides have settled down, beginning to play rugby football now, and an enthralling match in prospect. Paul Thorburn with the restart. He's taking his time. Kickoffs are so vital in important games like this. Low kick, just wobbling away there towards Wesker Street. Eighty-seven. My word, some of these fellows are going to lose some weight this afternoon. Some of the spectators might lose some as well. The kick from Tanetti is gathered by Chris Higgs. Well, you won't want to remember that one because he's certainly given uh, some incentive to Tanetti. And that was bad defensive play by Neath really. The youngster not known for his kicking prowess. There should have been an outside half or at least Paul Thorburn back there to gather that ball. Damien Phillips will be very annoyed that they have given this attacking position to Tanetti. 14 points to 13. Eddie James with the throw. To the back of the line out looking for Gary Jones, but away come Neath, David Pickering on the charge, straight into Colin Stevens. Pickering up toward the 10-metre line. Again, the pickup by Brian Williams. Kevin Phillips is there, just waiting for the service. Bridges, 
to David Pickering. Oh, that's a fine kick. David Pickering, with all the wisdom of a former scrum half, a position that he's played with some distinction for both Leith and also his opponents today, Tanefi. Tremendous play there by Pickering. A good charge and then a beautiful grubber kick. Excellent play by the ex Wheels captain. Eddie James barking uh, the line-out signals, which are relayed along the line by Jonathan Griffiths. Nobbed one to the middle, the penalty to Tanetti. Infringement in the middle of the line-out. Stevens with a relieving kick to touch. Vital that he makes his mark. Oh, it's a long one, but has it got there? Yes, Thorburn. Five metres, it went the distance. A kick from Thorburn, straight to Steve Bowling. Bowling on the counter-attack, but decides the kick instead, and that one going out to the full well warrant. Rather disappointing. That was great play by Paul Thorburn, you know. Retrieving that Stevens kick, took it on himself, had all the confidence in his ability, took the short kick, and plugged Tanetti back 60 metres. Kevin Phillips, just uh, midway between the Tanetti 22 and the halfway line. Through the middle of the line out. Put into Tanetti, the throw not straight. for those fellows. Griffiths, short side. And Evans just lurking away there. The back row move being called, but uh, it's a bit of a mix-up, and the Leith were up a little bit too early that time. And one has to say that John Griffiths hasn't had his greatest game today. He's been well marked by, by Phil too, but I think sometimes he's taken the wrong option. Stevens, has he found touch this time? Yes, indeed he has. on the 22 meter line and uh, both vast armies of supporters constantly urging their men on in a rather noisy cup final Phillips and referee Les Beard not quite satisfied ordering a fifth scrum 15 meters in So, a Fanetti put in. A good attacking opportunity for the Scarlets. But this one, well, have gone against the head. Neath have done well. Corbin into touch. Great cheers all around. And that was rather untidy work by the Fanetti pack in concert with their scrum half. Jonathan Griffiths went his rugby in the Isle of Man for moving down to Carmarthen. Phil May gathers. Griffiths to Colin Stevens, to Sitaro, to Bowling, Bowling, and just not being able to get hold of it. Oh, that was so unfortunate for Bowling. He juggled around with it, almost like a circus act. Eventually the ball defeating him. Attention being drawn to an injury to Jeremy Pugh. I suspect we might get uh, a spate of injuries during uh, the latter ten minutes. And just watch the tidying up here done by Phil May in the Tlaty Pack. He wins the ball and he sets a good ball for the backs to use. Now it's good play by the midfield because they're trying to vary the tactics. There's the lob pass and you see they come on the dummy scissors and a long floating pass gives Bowling the chance to show his paces. But he starts juggling and there's where the ball is out of his grasp. To put in to Neath, we now have exactly 10 minutes of play remaining in the 89 Schweppes WRU Cup final. 
Mackey 13, Neath 14. The put in, the scrum, the drive from Kinetti. Neath under pressure. Higgs tries to gather, but the scrum has uh, gone round once again. There's Peard appealing for the straightening up of the scrums as Bridges feeds. All this is uh, strength sapping down onto the deck. And the Nol Army suddenly find a voice. Bridges with the feed, the control by Mark Jones, Forburn, giving himself a bit of an angle. It's not the best of kicks, though, bowling underneath it. Attempting to screw that one just inside, Thorburn back there in his position, and surely he'll minor. Then Catamouse scoring three players uh, towards his presence. And so Neath regroup behind their 22 meter line. And he seems to have space once again. Carwin Davis this time. On the counter attack, uh, but well marshaled that time by Bateman and Chris Higgs into touch. Line out right on the halfway line. Kevin Phillips. Alex Chamelin. In his first cup final right in the middle of the line out. Aim towards Llewellyn, uh, Eddie James going through very quickly indeed for Finetti. And the penalty to Finetti. Uh, interesting decision this time from uh, Captain Phil Davis. Will he ask Colin Stevens to take the ball into the corner? It depends on the accuracy of the kick. It's probably well struck it well. Has it got there? No, not this time again. Thorburn, what an uncharacteristic mistake. That was the first mistake he has made all afternoon because the ball was over the line. He could have minded it, but he decided to go for distance and look where he's put me. Meet them under pressure. But the minutes beginning to tick away. A solitary point in it. Kineffi varying the line-out options, especially at the back of the line-out. So this may well go to Phil Davis. Through the middle, Cornelius, but uh, Neath seemed to have it. Certainly winning some vital ball. Bridges under pressure from Eddie James as Finetti go hunting. Griffiths waits. It's in there somewhere and they're still on their feet. Now they go to ground. And that little drive has meant that it's a Finetti put in at the next ground. Options open. The uh, Snetty three quarters having a quick chat with each other. Darling just lurking, looking to come in as the extra man. Although the three quarters, a full of ideas. I'd be surprised if Phil Davis doesn't have a go here. It seems to be the ideal position. Use that uh, bulk of the number eight. Peard having a uh, nonsense with the two front rows as Griffiths feeds. Now Fnetti will have to hold, meet breaking. Phil Davis still in control and asking for the secondary shove. Davis on the pickup, on to Gary Jones. And this time it's a knee put in and an opportunity lost for Fnetti. Davis disappointed at the back row move hadn't worked. Yeah, they too. put a lot of energy into that scrum there. They held it, it was twisted and turned, and Phil Davis was always in control. But the pass went down of Gary Jones, and I think that would have taken a lot of steam out of the and forward. Kevin Phillips receiving attention. In a vital car game beneath machinery this afternoon. Wanting to get the game underway. No lapse in space whatsoever. 
is the point in it. We now have less than five minutes of this cup final remaining. Orchestrating matters. The drive in, the disruptive shove from Tanetti. Bridges away into touch. It's not a lengthy one. Chris Bridges, the youngster. Eddie James. Getting the line out signals worked out. Not the time to make any kind of mistakes. James throw, the lob looking uh, for the height of Russell Cornelius, but it's Bridges away, tackled by Eddie James, as the nephew drive through into the corner. But Griffiths waits, a neat under extreme examination and pressure. The ball away. Will it reach touch? Well, that's a superb kick from Paul Williams, the man who came from Newbridge to Neath. That's a vital kick at this stage of the game. Neath hanging on to this solitary point lead. Benefi desperate to get the game going again. Cornelius in the middle for Benefi, Phil Davis at the back. Mark Jones at the back for Neath. Gareth Llewellyn in the middle for the All Blacks. Paul Williams just waiting for the service from the scrum half of Bridges take over, takes over the responsibility himself. And again, another vital kick. Frustrating for Farron Davis. Bridges controlling this game, much as did Robert Jones in the Welsh match against England. Brilliant play by the scrum half there, into the box, 60 metres. Hey, but give credit to Gareth to well in the second row. He's been winning, vital Sanetti ball, stopping Sanetti using it. Tremendous play. Sanetti then, back in their own quarters, Eddie James with the throw. And that's that man to William again. Bridges to Mark Jones. Tackled by Phil Davis. Pick up by Kevin Phillips. Short side. This is Williams. Griffiths is back there for Tanetti, but uh, Gary Jones taking over the responsibilities. But Neath have gained four or five metres, and that's rather ominous for the Scarlets. Neath playing exactly right, tactically keeping Tanetti in that corner. It reminds you of the Wales-England game with Robert Jones took control. This time Bridges has taken the game with a scruff of the neck. Neath deciding uh, to take Jeremy Pugh out of this line-out as Tanetti come through. Gary Jones winning a vital ball if Tanetti can control it. Stevens and Tanetti running it. Nigel Davis on to Yian Evans. Well, that's the kind of thing that happens when it's also rushed. And Kevin Phillips and Colin Leite just wanting to get on with it. Nessie are in desperation, really. Willing the ball onto Yian Evans, but the winger unable to accept the pass. And, and out of your shot, Gary Jones is limping, so it means Nessie are down to seven men in the forwards. They're a back row man short. Will need to take advantage of it here. Bridges with the feed, pick up by Mark Jones, and Neath go again, Edwins caught short to the line, but Neath are there in numbers, there's Peart says no, we're going to have a scrum, and Rowland's an interested spectator in the form of Yian Evans that time, probably enjoying the spectacle of the cup final. And the attention of Les Pierre, the referee, will be called over to the injury to Gary Jones. It doesn't look as if he's uh, fit enough to take any further part. And this, a vital stage of the cup final, we're already into injury time. It's an attacking scrum. And if Neath have got their tactics worked out, they will realise that Clethy had a back row forward shot. I would be very surprised if we don't see a Mark Jones, Phil Pill move here. Emmett Lewis already lined up, but Neath will have none of that. And this, the scrum spins around. Lewis waiting to be called on. 
Amir Lewis makes his first cup final appearance. Product of Carmarthen. Bridges with a put in. Minute into injury time. 14 points to 13. Can Neath hold on? Mark Jones. Slight fumble. Bridges bundled into touch. Kenetti survived that one, but referee Les Peard probably noticed, took a good look at his watch. Eddie James with a throw. The tap down back on the Neath side, and here goes Paul Williams on the half break. Kenetti are there with the tackles. There's Beard, another look at the watch. There is the whistle. Neath are the 89 Cup winners. Revenge for last year after their defeat at the hands of Kanetti. Not a classic first half, but full of enjoyment in the second half. Disappointment for Kanetti, but the double for Neath. Unofficial champions and Schweppes Cup winners. And what delight for Kevin Phillips. He's thought about this game for the past 12 months. Didn't enjoy himself at all at the Alps Park last year. But what delight for the farmer and Welsh International this year. Smiles all around from the Neath supporters, more especially. And that's the prize for holding out 14 points to 13 against Fenetti. Tears of joy all around for the Neath supporters and their skipper. There will be celebrations for some westbound on the M4 this evening. So Kevin Phillips being shepherded, having some difficulty in making his way through the crowd. Well, they won't mind the shoving and the barging. They are the cup winners. Well, let me get that cup, says Kevin Phillips. Uh, can he get through? That's his, uh, probably one of his biggest problems of the afternoon. And he's eventually through the police court. And yes, we've done it, he says. We are number one, and why not? <laughs> David Pickering, former Tlenetti player, he knows what it wins to win the cup for Tlenetti and also Neath. Tell you what, Neath will be absolutely thrilled. They've given it 100% all season. They've not held anything back. And I think they deserved it, haven't they? Three tries to one at the end of the day. And I think that man, Kevin Phillips, who's just got out the shot, he's had a wonderful season, and they fully deserve this victory. They finished the stronger side, and three tries to one says it all. Jeremy Pugh and Chris Higgs. The moment for him, just 20 years of age. There'll be some beer sunk in the Nord tonight, Martin, I'll tell you that. Well, they claim that the pubs went dry in Fnetti when Fnetti beat the All Blacks. They'll go dry, certainly, in the Neath and the Vale of Neath area this evening. What a marvellous performance by young Chris Bridges at Scrimmar. A replica of what Robert Jones did against England. Young Bridges did that exactly for Neath this afternoon. Jones ready with a cup to present to the meet captain. And here comes Colin Phillips from Hebron, Caselli, Cardigan. The farmer who sacrifices so much time to play this game of rugby football. What a moment of treasure for Kevin Phillips. Behind him, another farmer, Bill Richards. It's neat here, deserving for them. David Pickering, followed by Alan Edmonds. Kevin Phillips salutes the Neath supporters and they respond in kind. What a sight to behold for the Neath camp. David East applauding both sides. Paul Thorburn, the man who kept his call cool right throughout the cup final.
the replacements receiving their cups Adrian Davis Paul Jackson Jonathan Griffiths they played a vital part in this tremendously successful season for me the crowd still salutes they're not going to leave and commiserations for the losers but also congratulations to Trinetti on another fine year Phil Davis the captain Ian Evans shortly off to Australia Nigel Davis Lawrence Delaney Jonathan Griffiths looking thoroughly disappointed just a point in it at the final whistle now if that champagne bottle had been full it's probably been uh, drunk by now by the lead supporters so the crowd beginning to disperse but they still want a last look at Kevin Phillips and that cup I'm sure that they will be rewarded for that before they return home. Has appeared his first cup final appearance. Very nervous week for him. AD reinforced by the two experienced touch judges, international referees Derek Bevan and Clive Rawling. Oh, they're dressed up for the occasion. And what a day and what an evening they're going to have. Bowler hats at the ready. of the mall Kevin Phillips into the changing room with Brian Thomas the man who did so much in the formative years of getting this neat spot together Mark Jones delighted with his try not so delighted with his period in the sin bin Phil Peel Lloyd Isaacs the replacements there will be huge cheers in that changing room and just on the right-hand side, just going out of shot there, beneath coach Ron Waldron. Well, before they depart, two points west down to the dividing line of Britain Ferry and also Tonetti. There will be some cheers all around. The final score there, 14 points to 13. Well, Phil Bennett and Eddie Butler. Eddie, first of all, a disappointing first half, but it pepped up in the second. Well, I think so. I think the first half was the uh, the sizing up time, and uh, once the preliminaries were out of the way, the second half just unfolded, and it really was a, a magnificent spectacle. I mean, Leaf actually took a stranglehold as soon as the second half started, and the question was, could they convert that into points? And when Flanetti came straight back up and conceded that first try, I thought that maybe ju having just conceded the one try, maybe that wouldn't be enough, up, enough after so much deep pressure. But back came Leaf. It really was a yo-yo game, and I thought it was a marvellous spectacle in the second half. Phil Bennett, the kind of game that you expected? Uh, yes, really very tense, a lot of ill-discipline out there, a lot of passion. But to me, the two youngsters, Gareth Llewellyn, pinched a roller line, no ball in the second half, and Chris Bridges put him down the corner, as Robert Jones did against England. He had a magnificent match, and I thought they were the two stars, those two young men for Neath. It's been quite a year for Neath, Eddie. Yes, it has, and of course they've been waiting for this for so long, for 12 months to the day, really, that they... they the whole club and the whole town was, went into mourning after last year's display and I really felt that there was no way they'd repeat the, that disappointment. Um, but you have to give credit to Flanetti, the defence against that surging wave of Neath attack after Neath attack was... was Playing the Franca role there, again is Bridges, the but illegal work on the ground again by Neath and all that good work has gone to waste and a penalty awarded to Mosley. Far better work with the knee forwards with Lloyd Isaacs in the van leading from the front. And that's more like the old knee style. And look at the forwards, number seven and Lloyd Isaac, Yuka, standing out, driving at the heart of the Mosley defence. You see here, he goes down the ground, laying back, good ball. The forwards are there. It's just about to come back there. They're driving over. Mr. Braxton penalises knee going over the top. Mosley persists with slow scrum ball it's into midfield this time they mess it up just between the two centers this is a chance for Neath again Paul Williams does or plays the flanker role goes in there very quickly indeed and that's a feature of Neath's play it's not forwards and backs it's the first one there that does the work and so effectively done there by Williams good play by the fly half Paul Williams he went in straight away made himself available and it got the ball and mostly over the top of penalty so Paul Williams 
268 points to his credit last season. Can he register? Yes, indeed, his first points for the 1989-1990 season. It brings Neath to three points, and they now just trail Mosley by another three. Ian Arnson, who has a conversion, a successful conversion to his name, doesn't find touch on that occasion. It's brought out into midfield. Paul Williams starts on a run again. Now looks to the open side. Lovely support from Jonathan Griffiths. More support from Martin.